In this edition, we find out about the changes from E&D to D&I. Reserves and Royal Marines feature in our fighting arms stories. We recap on the benefits of the Armed Forces Covenant. But first, we hear from your new Second Sea Lord. Admiral Steele, thank you very much for joining us today. And I want to kick off by saying congratulations on your new role as Second Sea Lord. Thank you. Now, I know this is your first time on 2-6, but I think today as well is also going to be the first time that many of the lads and lasses have actually been able to put a face to the name. So it's a great opportunity to get to know a little bit about you and find out about your career so far. So will you fill us in? Kate, I've had a, an extraordinary career over 33 years, um, which has ranged from everything from being at sea to a legal advisor ashore. But I think the two highlights were, one, working for the first Sea Lord for three years in the Ministry of Defence, but then following that, being the naval base commander down here in Portsmouth, which was the most brilliant job, looking after 17,000 people that come into the naval base every day. And then from there, looking after talent management, looking after both ratings and officers' careers as naval secretary, and as you know, uh, taking over from Sir Charles Montgomery seven weeks ago. Well, you've certainly got a wealth of experience behind you and your feet are now well and truly under the table. So what are your priorities then over the next few years? Kate, we work for the most amazing organisation. Everything from nuclear submariners all the way through to fast jet pilots, chefs, stewards, hydrographic experts, you name it, this Royal Navy does it. 33,000 people. There isn't another organisation in the country that does what we do 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And yet our people are being asked to do more and more all the time as the government demands of our Navy and our Royal Marines uh, so much more than it did in the past. What I need to do is make sure that those people that we are calling upon so much to do the business of this country, protecting the nation's interests, is to make sure that they have headroom by allowing them to feel professional in what they're doing, to allow them to feel proud. So how exactly are you going to achieve that? We've already started. Two ways we've started in doing that. One is to build back the numbers into the squads. It'll take a little bit of time, but we're building that back up. So we've got more people to assist in those areas of the business that are hardest pressed. And also we're sorting out our training. We're making sure that our training is the best training and not necessarily the most training so that our people can actually spend more time with their families and when they're on board their ships, doing the jobs that they were employed to do at the start. People are certainly at the centre of the naval service and what you do. So what other manpower challenges are you facing and how are you going to tackle them? We've just come through a really difficult period of redundancy and um, we've had to lose people that I would not necessarily have wanted to go from the service. But we've kept a lot of really, really good people. Where they're the people we need for the future with the right skills, the ambition, the motivation to carry forward this great Navy over the next few years. Not only has it been redundancy, but it's been pay freeze, cut in allowances, uh, reductions in the benefits that we have traditionally seen in the service. What I have to do is deliver on the promises to make life better for them. The new employment model, the Royal Naval People Strategy, all the great initiatives that we have building up for our people have been long in the pipeline. Now I've got to deliver those. I know pensions are certainly one of the hot topics and these services have got a new pension plan from 2015 onwards. So what message would you give to the Naval Service about that situation? All I would say to everybody in the Naval Service, wherever you're serving in uniform, uh, the new pension scheme is extremely good. Some will not actually benefit financially as much as they would hope. Others will benefit more. But the complete package of the new pension scheme is one that is most definitely the best in the public service. Uh, it's slightly different from the old one, but this is not a pension scheme that you should worry about. And for those that have been in the service quite a while, of course, they're building up their already existing pension scheme, which will stop in 2015. But then that will be banked. That's theirs. And everything they earn under the new pension scheme is an addition to it. Now, the lads and lasses within the Navy are one side of the coin, but of course the flip side are their families, their support networks. So how committed are you to looking after and supporting them? We're a service where our families are scattered throughout the United Kingdom, so maintaining contact is difficult, but so important. The reason that our people do so much is because they have the love and the care of their families back in the United Kingdom. What we've got to do is make sure that they feel valued. And we're doing everything we possibly can to devote money and resources and time to linking in to our families, especially um, ensuring that they know what's going on at all times in our service. They're part of the wider naval family. 
from what you've said, it certainly sounds like a very exciting time at the moment. There's an awful lot of new kit and exciting equipment on its way. So what's that going to mean to people? Well, I hope they're stimulated by it. Uh, I have never known a time in my service career of 33 years when we have such an exciting future uh, to be looking forward to. New submarines, new aircraft carriers, new Type 26 frigates, um, new Mars tankers, new Viking upgrades. I mean, the, the shopping list is endless, and it's all being built now. And this is all going to be delivered in the next few years. Uh, and we've got to man that. And we've got to have people who are skilled, ambitious, and keen to deliver this capability for the future. So what's your final message to people out there today? My final message is to be proud. Uh, we have gone through a very difficult period. We're everywhere around the world, whether that be hosting presidents, royalty, uh, the civilian popula population, building orphanages, war fighting, delivering peace, delivering um, disaster relief. Uh, be proud of what you do and we'll deliver, I hope, that sense of professionalism that we've actually taken for granted over the last couple of years to make sure that each and every member of this great naval service stays in as long as possible.